That's what we're trying to do. Shake up that formula. I, your family's important, and welcome to Anna Ruth Deming. Huh? First timer? Congratulations. Uh, yeah, that's sweet. I was talking about something else, though. <laughs> we're trying to shake up the system by investing our lives in other people so that they, too, can have life in Christ. And so last week I handed out these cards, this uh, Everyone Needs Jesus card, and I asked you to commit that you would pray with us, pray for this person that needs to come to Christ. You would invite them uh, to church, and you would share a meal with them. And I asked you to take those cards home. If you didn't turn them in last week, take them home and pray about it for a week. Some of you are getting a card for the first time today. There's some on the tables on both sides as you exit this place. This is important. I think it has the potential uh, to change me, you, church, and the community. Uh, so just think about that. And who, who's your one? Who, not, not who's your. Who is your one? Who, who are you after? Who are you trying to invest in so they can come to Christ? It, it Maybe even that one, that one that's outcast like the tax collector, that one who's so different from you are like the we, Syrophoenician one we'll talk about next week, that one who's so good. One of my struggles, one of my friends that uh, I tried to, that Dick, I did become a Christian, was we went to high school together. He was just better than I was. He was a heathen, but he was a good heathen. I mean, he, he didn't live for Jesus, but he was nicer than I was. He was, more, more, he, he was, he was a good guy, but he still needed Christ. They, even, even that one, or maybe that one that you look at and you think, man, that person, that's hopeless. They are never, ever going to change, never going to come to Christ. We don't write anybody off because Jesus writes everybody in his story. The story today is in Mark 5, and I'm gonna, I want to set the story. This is one of my favorite Bible stories. This is one of your favorite Bible stories. It's from the life of Christ, and here's the background for it. In Matthew 4, 1, once again, Jesus began teaching by the lakeshore. A very large crowd soon gathered around him, so he got into a boat. He sat in the boat while the people remained on the shore, and he began to teach them, and he taught them in parables, and it was, a, it was a electric. You've been there. It was exciting, great energy, great revival. Things are going great, and then Mark 4.35 says this, As evening came, Jesus said to the disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. They're at the Sea of Galilee. Now, why would you leave a great revival, all these people coming to hear you preach, and say, let's go to the other side, and the other side is Gentile territory. But they get in the boat, and they take a moonlight cruise across the Sea of Galilee. It's sweet. Doesn't that sound good? Well, you know what happens on the Sea of Galilee at night? The wind whoops, and you hear that again? Whoops, down in there, and bam, that, that thing is, is torn up. Jesus, who's been teaching all day, is doing what I'll be doing about 2 o'clock today. He's asleep in the boat. He, he's taking a nap. He, he's tired. And the disciples, have you heard this story before? They're terrified. And they wake up, hey, 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 do something. Can you do something? And Jesus stands up and says, hush, to the waves, be still. And they calm down. And then, verse 41, the disciples were absolutely terrified. You thought, you'd think they'd be terrified at the storm. When Jesus says, hush, be still, they're even more terrified. Who is this man, they asked each other. Even the winds and the waves obey him. And a crazy day is about to get crazier. Mark 5, here's the story. They arrived at the other side of the lake, Gentile territory, the region of Gerasenes. When Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from a cemetery to meet him. Anybody spooked yet? This man lived among the barrel caves. He could no longer be restrained even with a chain. Whenever he was put in chains, he in shackles. As he often was, he snapped the chains from his wrist and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Day and night. He wandered among the barrel caves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. Isn't that a pretty picture? How are you doing this morning? Am I too fast for you? No, I, this is, this, my mind races when I read this. It, it's the ultimate, if you're a Jew, this is the ultimate unclean trifecta. You, you come in, and first of all, you're in Gentile territory. You don't want to be around Gentiles. And the Gentiles are raising pigs there. You don't eat pork. There was a man coming out of the tombs. You don't want anything to do with the tombs. You don't hang out in the graveyard. And he's full of unclean spirits to make matters worse. <laughs> the Gospel of Luke says he was naked. And here's just one little political comment. Nobody wants to see that. Am I right? <clears throat> oh, 
Well, I know I'm right. You don't have to. Yeah, nobody wants to see that. And not only is he naked, but he's taking rocks and he's gashing himself with the stones and cutting himself. Well, who wants to get off the boat? Only Jesus. He's the only one who wants to get off. The rest of them are going, hey, let's go back where the Jews live. Let's go back where we have lamb and cow and goat, not pigs, not unclean spirits, not the tombs. This cutting thing that is, seems to be a recent phenomenon is not a recent phenomenon. It has always been that way. That, that's been happening for a long time. I'm going to tell you why. Because when you're held in Satan's grip, well, Satan's modus operandi is this. John 8, says that he is the father of lies. He has been a murderer from the beginning. And John 10, 10 says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what Satan wants to do. And he's always been that way, and it continues even to this day. This guy, unlike some others in the Bible, had no friends to bring him to Jesus. Remember the guy where they cut a hole in the roof? Remember the, the parents who brought it, said, come see my, my sick child? Remember the, the nobleman who came for his servant? This guy, the only human contact this guy has is when the, somebody tries to put a chain on him and it's very ineffective. The chains couldn't hold him because Satan had him bound. But hear this, no one is hopeless to Jesus. Got anybody in mind? Nobody is hopeless to Jesus. We used to sing a little chorus when I was a kid that said, Satan had to be bound, but Jesus set me free. Anybody remember that one? I knew that would be the case. Maybe I made that up. It's, that's a good song. Satan had to be bound. Jesus set me free. And it's not just the demoniac who's bound by Satan. Ephesians chapter 2 says this, verse 1. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers of the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger just like everyone else. We were, Satan had us bound. I, I, good, good selections on the songs this morning. We, we were tied up in that deal. Can I just say that your first day in sin, I know sin looks attractive. Your first day in sin is the very best day in sin. Enjoy it. It gets worse after that. Hello? I don't care. Your first high is going to be your best high. Your first immoral affair will be your best one. That first time in it, 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 it may seem exciting and pleasurable. In fact, the book of Hebrews says that Moses passed up the passing pleasures of sin. And there is some pleasure there, but it has compound interest. And the first day is the worst day. The first day is the best day. And it gets worse after that because the compound interest just weighs you down. Somebody act like you know what I'm talking about. And it, it gets worse and worse. When we, when we ask you, when the Bible asks you to do the right thing, could I just say that it's also the best thing? It, the right thing isn't, well, I have to live like this because, no, it's, that's the best way to live. It's the happiest way to live, and until you get there, <clears throat> Satan has you bound. Nothing worse than being in the grip of Satan. And this man, in the tombs, naked, cutting himself, full of evil spirits, is bound by Satan. Verse 6 says this, When Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him, ran to meet him, and bowed low before him. With a shriek, he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? In the name of God, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus already said to the Spirit, Come out of the man, you evil spirit. Every time a demon meets Jesus in the Gospels, the demon knows who Jesus is and respects his authority and begs for mercy. The demons don't say to Jesus, You want to arm wrestle? Think I could take you today? Absolutely not, because Jesus is the Almighty God in flesh. And the demons, the Bible says, believe and shudder because they know they're about to get an eviction notice. So Jesus went out of his way to meet this man, whom everybody else would just discard. You know Stradivarius, you know the name of the violin maker. He lived late 1600s, early 1700s. He made 1,100 violins. 650 of those violins are still around. That's pretty good. And they say that those violins made by Stradivarius just have a better tone. They're just, they're priceless. They're just better than, and for years people have wondered, well, how come his violins are so good? And one of the theories was it was a real cold century, and the wood grew slower. The trees grew slower, the wood was denser, and had a richer tone to it. Interesting theory. 
Another theory is he used some kind of special chemical that no one's been able to duplicate, and that chemical to treat him, and it made, it made a better sound. And the theory I like the best, and I think that has some factual basis behind it, is this, that Stradivarius, was a, even though he was a violin maker, was a poor man, and he couldn't afford the best wood, so he'd go down the harbor and he'd get the driftwood. And after that driftwood had been in the, in the water, that salt water for a long time, he would pick that driftwood out, he would clean it up, he would treat it with a chemical, and he'd make his violins, and they say that the theory is that the microbes got in that wood and made these chambers where the music resonates better than in any other kind of wood. I'm not sure about Stradivarius, but I know, I know this. Jesus can take the wrecks of life and make beautiful, sweet music with us. Even a man they called Legion. Verse 7 in the New Living says, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High? The New International says, What do you want with me? And that's our question. Why do you interfere? What does Jesus want? Why would he cross the lake? And the first reason is this. He wants to release anyone from bondage. Being a Christian is way more than being forgiven. It's about life before the grave, not just after the grave. And Jesus wants to release us from the chains that bind us. Mark 5, verse 9. Here's the cleansing of the demoniac. Jesus demanded, what's your name? He replied, my name's Legion, because there are many of us inside this man. The evil spirits begged him again and again not to send them to the distant place. He happened to be a large herd of pigs. I think this is why I like this story as a kid. Feeding on a hillside nearby, send us into the pigs, the spirits begged. Let us enter them. And Jesus gave them permission. The evil spirits came out of the man, entered the pigs, and the entire herd of 2,000 pigs plunged down the steep hillside in the lake that drowned in the water. I did that in Bible drama at camp one time. That was good. She put the spirits in the pigs, let the pigs go. The herdsmen fled to the nearby town, surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. People rushed out to see what had happened. As the crowd soon gathered around Jesus, they saw the man who had been demon-possessed by the legion of demons. He was sitting there fully clothed and perfectly sane. These people have tried to, they, they put chains on him, but he broke the chains. He cut himself. He, he wouldn't wear clothes. He, think if you had to go bury a loved one. Somebody, somebody dies. You take him to the graveyard. You don't want to go. The crazy man is there. The demoniac man is there. They go back. He's perfectly sane. He, he's in his right mind. He's fully clothed. And the last part of the verse says, they were all afraid. You should have been afraid earlier. Hello? You should have been afraid when he we was roaming around like a, a cr crazed maniac. No, they're, they're afraid now. They're afraid like the apostles were afraid when they saw Jesus calm the storm because they knew that Jesus had incredible power they'd never seen before. He has the power to change anybody. We read the verse earlier, 2 Corinthians 5, If any man is in Christ, he's new. Old things passed away, old, new things have come. We reflect his image, the image of God, but Satan mars that image in us. Our problem is this. We don't get better on our own. We have enough drug education. Somebody help me. We, we got plenty. You know, you know young people are still picking up cigarettes? Do we do a bad job teaching? I think there's enough information out there. The problem is we don't change on our own. Romans chapter 7. What a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life dominated by sin, these chains and death? Thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. No one gets free and comes to Jesus. You come to Jesus and he will set you free. Possible. Romans chapter 6 says this. Have you forgotten that when you were joined with Christ in baptism, we joined his death? We, we died, we were buried with him in Christ by baptism. As Christ was raised from the dead by the power of the Father, we also live new lives. And baptism expresses our faith that Jesus can change anything. So we no longer reply, rely on willpower. We rely upon a new life and new power in him. I can be changed. I can be changed. Hey, I don't have to stay like this anymore. Are you filtering that through? Because I think that's a, that's a big deal. I, I can't change. I can't make myself better, but I can be changed. When I unite my life with Jesus, 
in his death, burial, and resurrection. He puts his spirit in me, his power in me. I don't have to stay like this anymore. I can be changed. All right, that was pretty good. I don't know if you got it or not. I got great news for you. You think, well, I was, I've always just had a bad temper. Well, you don't have to stay like that. I've, I've always had a smart mouth. You don't have to do that anymore. Well, it's just, it, I'm enjoying it. I, there is freedom in Christ. Not because of who, listen, I've been, I've been trying this for about three minutes to get you going with me. And I, I, I don't have much left. But if you understand that Satan had us bound, the demo- imagine the joy of the demoniac man. Now the rest of the, the crowd may have said, get out of here because we, we're losing our money. You know, the, the economy is going down, the pigs are over the, over the brink. But the demoniac man had to be full of joy. I mean, th- think about his life. Here he is fully clothed, sitting in his right mind. Jesus can release anyone from bondage, and he releases us all for worship as well. A lot of worship wars. Have you heard that term, worship wars, going on? And there always have been. You know, it's a, is it okay to have words on a screen? Can, can, you, can you play an instrument? Can you not play an instrument? Can you play this instrument, not that instrument? Uh, how loud should the, the music be? Ay, yay, 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 yay. Weary. Can I just say, worship wars started in heaven before the earth when Lucifer said, I would like to be worshipped. And that's the worship war that continues to this day. Because Satan still says, I want to be worshipped. That's what he said to Jesus, remember? Bow yourself down. Worship me. I give you all the kingdoms of the world. Revelation 13, when the dragon shows up, the world in fear sits and bows to worship. And our bondage is rooted in our worship of the wrong thing. When you worship the wrong thing, whatever substitute you have for God, whether it be self or someone else or something, when you worship the wrong thing, you are going to be chained and be in misery for a long time. That all changed for the demon-possessed man when he met Jesus. Verse 6 says, when Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him, ran to him, and bowed low before him. Now, the New King James translates that he bowed, he bowed in worship. He worshiped Jesus. Now, that's a question. The man is still full of demons. In a minute, the demons are going to shriek out, what are you doing with us? But the man comes and bows low before Jesus. New King James says that word is worship. The American Standard Version says it's worship from 1901, for your information, from 1901. The word there is, here's your one Greek word for the day. You can use it anywhere you go. It's pros kineo. It means to bend the knee. It means to worship. All through the Bible, it's the strongest word in the New Testament for worship. It, all through the Revelation, when the Lamb is there, they bow in worship. They, they bend the knee. They bow low. And this man, who's full of demons, Jesus sets him free to worship. Now, is it possible for someone in the grip of Satan to worship? They hear the word. They, say Jesus, they see Jesus, and they call out to him. And you are not so bound by Satan that you can't call out to him, that you can't worship and when you do things begin to change because this is the reason jesus came across the water not just to get the legion of demons out but to release this one for worship the the bible says jesus said the father seeks those who will worship him in spirit and in truth he is the seeker james chapter 4 humble yourselves before the before god resist the devil he will flee from you why would he flee come close to god and god will come close to you when you come close to God, he's with you, and Satan must flee. You know somebody that's too far gone? Listen, on, on that card that we're going to ask you to turn back in, if you haven't turned them in yet, I want you to commit to inviting and sharing a meal and praying. And I commit for myself and for elders and staff here, we will pray with you. If you put your name on the back of that card, we'll, we'll pray for you as you try to influence that person you know anybody that would be even that one? They're just too hopeless. They're too far gone, too much in the grip of Satan. A chained man can be changed, and then we're charged. Here's the last one. Jesus wants to release us, every one of us, for mission. And the story has a surprise ending starting in verse 16. 
Those who had seen what happened told the others about the demon-possessed man and the pigs. And the crowd began pleading with Jesus, Go away, leave us alone. As Jesus was getting in the boat, the man who had had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus said, No, go home to your family. Tell them everything the Lord has done for you, how merciful he has been. So the man started off to visit the ten towns of that region and began to proclaim the great things Jesus had done for him. Everyone was amazed at what he told them. Three requests are made of Jesus in this chapter. The first one is made by the demons, and the demons say, Jesus, would you send us into the pigs? And Jesus says, okay. The next request is by the people of the community who say, Jesus, you're killing our economy. Would you leave our area? And Jesus said, okay. And then the formerly demon-possessed man says, Jesus, I love you. I want to follow you. I'm going to go with you. And Jesus says, no way. No way. You go back home because somebody needs to hear your story. And somebody needs to hear your story as well. Tell them everything the Lord has done for you, church. Somebody needs to hear your story. Somebody needs to hear you say, I was in so much pain, I used to cut myself too. I don't do that anymore. He has freed me. Somebody needs to hear your story. I used to run away. I mean, I just thought life was so bad, I'd run away to a pill or a powder or a bottle. But I don't do that anymore because I've been set free from my chain. Somebody needs to hear you say, I... I used to think if I could just buy one more thing, get one more thing, uh, be with one more person, make one more deal, but I found a better reason to live. And maybe somebody hears, hear you say, I went to church all the time and I played by the rules, but it wasn't real for me until I met Jesus and he changed me. So you have a card. If you don't have a card, you can get one on the way out. Who, who's your one? Who's that one person that you would pray for? Because they... Maybe you see them as hopeless. But you pray for them, and you would say, I'm, I'm going to share a meal, I'm going to talk, and I'm going to invite them. Who's your one? There's a place out in California called Dante's View. Have you heard of Dante's View? It's a place where you can pull off the side of the road. There's a, 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 it's very picturesque. You can look down the valley. You can see the lowest spot in the USA, a place called Badwater that's 200 feet below sea level. And on a clear day, you can raise your eyes and see the top of Mount McKinley, the highest point in the lower 48 states. And there's somebody who's looking down and all they can see is the bottom. That's where the legion was. Life is terrible. But if you look up, and you can, you can see the heights of glory. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we... Uh, so amazed at the power of Jesus. I'm not surprised the disciples were terrified when he calmed the waves or that the people of the community were terrified when he cleansed the demoniac. Father, I'm thankful that you have power to change us. No matter who we are, no matter what we've done, no matter how bad it's been. And Father, we probably need to hear that because there's so many good people here and people around us, we look at them and go, wow, it's so, so lost. Father, help us to just see them as people who are held captive by Satan, who need the freedom that's in Jesus. I pray that as we turn these cards in, as we think about it, as we pray about it, that you'd help us to be the one that could be a change agent for somebody else. Use us, please. In Jesus' name, amen.